Hello, I'm Bill Harris, and welcome to Life Questions, a program that provides a biblical perspective on life's issues. Thank you for tuning in. Without a doubt, you will be at some time wronged in your life by others. How do you react to that? Well, today we're going to discuss the topic of forgiveness and unforgiveness. Is it okay to hold grudges? We also hope to have time to discuss sickness. Some say that sickness is a sign of a lack of faith. Well, what is the true answer to that? We're going to be joined today by a group of ministers who look to God to provide answers to your questions. They are Pastor Dale Booker of the Lima First Assembly, Pastor Wayne Bradley of ICANN Ministries of Lima, Pastor Mark Bird of Revive Ohio, formerly pastor of the First Heavy Meadow Church in uh, Greensville, and also Pastor Neil Whitney of the Church at Allentown. Gentlemen, we welcome you to today's program. Thank you. Thank you. And our first discussion is about the subject of bitterness, forgiveness, unforgiveness, that, that sort of thing. Let's, let's start out with the, the, the bitterness side of it all. That is the, um, the holding the grudges and the unforgiveness. Um, the, we know that the Bible, of course, tells us not to do that. But then comes the rationale, the human rationale that says, yeah, but you don't know what they said to me. You don't know what they did to me. You, you don't know what they put me through. And some people feel that they're quite justified in holding the grudge because it's the only way they can get back the individual for what they've done to them. Pastor Whitney, what would you have to say about a case like that? Oh, my first thought on that statement is, vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, we have to have compassion when people are hurt. We don't really know how they're feeling. We don't know what they're going through. So we have to do our level best to try to understand uh, where they're coming from mm -hmm. and uh, how they have been hurt because uh, we really do care. I was always taught that if you don't forgive somebody, it's like you drinking a cup of poison and expecting them to die. Yeah, so yeah. that's a real scary thought. Yeah, that, uh, goodness, I mean, it doesn't make sense to do that, does it? And to take that cup of poison, hoping it's somebody else is going to die. Right. You know, uh, it's, 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 it's strange, but some people feel that it's the, as I said, that's the only way they can get back at somebody. And there's got to be a better way to explain this to an individual so they understand that it not only affects the relationship between them and the other person, but more directly, it affects you. Mm -hmm. It can even affect you physically. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Yes. Right. yes. Let me read a scripture here that I think comes into play. This is in Isaiah chapter 43, and it is verse 25. Mm -hmm. And listen to what God says as he's about to forgive Israel for its sins. He says, I, even I, am he who blots out and cancels your transgressions for my sake. God is saying, I'm forgiving you for my own sake. And he says, for my own sake, and I will not remember your sins. Yeah. And, and you would think oh, yeah. if, if God is saying that it's, it's such a serious matter that he not hold grudges, that he's going to forgive you for his own sake. Goodness, what about us? Amen. Amen. Yeah, I think that's uh, I think that's a great point. That's what, one of the things that uh, really got my attention was hearing that scripture and, and the understanding that here is the God that I perceive to never need anything, um, to never uh, be in a place where he's um, needing anything for himself. But he's saying right now, you know, I'm going to do this for you in your mind, but in actuality, I'm doing this for me. Mm -hmm. I'm doing this for me so that I can continue to be everything that I am, not that he needs anything to be God, but you know what I'm saying, that, that whole idea that God is, is, is all sufficient and, and able and, and, our, and our greatest uh, direction beacon, if you will. I'm just so excited about the fact that here's, here's my God saying to me mm -hmm. that I'm gonna forgive you, I'm gonna forget these things that you've done, and I'm gonna do this for me. Mm -hmm. So if he needs to do that for him, then it stands to mind to me that I need to do that for me as it comes into um, my relationships with others. And, 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 and frankly, my relationship with God, because mm -hmm. I've, I've learned to forgive yeah. people, but I've also had this thing where this grudge where I had something against God and, and I need to forgive him and I need to forgive myself for that mindset as well. So. Is and, powerful. And back onto that other part of it about uh, you, you don't know what they did to me. I mean, yes. take, take the wife, for instance, 
that has committed herself to her husband uh, for the lifelong marriage, and then she finds out that all along that the husband has had a mistress on the side. And now she's confronted with what to do. Yes. Immediately, what, one thing that comes to mind is, should I leave him, of course? Mm -hmm. how, am I, how am I going to get back at him? Yeah. And she's, she's in need of counsel, whether she needs it or not. Well, both of them are yes. in need of counsel. All right. But I'm dealing specifically with her right now. What do you say to minister to her? Well, there's, in all of our life, there's, there's a fence that comes, no matter how extreme or mm -hmm. not extreme that it is. That, there's a fence that happens yes. and many times what it, during those times that we, we we just put a wall up and if we're not careful we'll we'll justify you know uh, my actions and I'm just I've got to guard myself I have to protect myself and uh, when we do that what we don't realize is what we're not only building up a wall between me and the person that offended me but if we're not careful, we're, we're building up that wall between us and God because Amen. he commands us to forgive. Amen. He, mm -hmm. he commands us to let go. Even in Matthew chapter 6, it says, if you forgive other people when they sit against you, your he heavenly father, he's going to forgive you as well. Amen. So you're saying basically then that God's forgiveness is up, of us is contingent upon yes. our forgiveness of yes. others. Oh, yeah. Amen. It's right there in scripture. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's right mm -hmm. there in scripture. Yeah. Amen. And if I could real quick just add this in there, you know, that, that whole offense thing that you're talking about, uh, it, it, it's something inside of me that reminds me of how sometimes uh, people may be looking for offense. Um, I, maybe I found myself in that position at yeah. times where I just, because I had an attitude that was not of gratitude or an attitude that didn't, I didn't really want to forgive. So I hold on to this grudge. But like you said, when we build these fences, what we do is, we build the fence to keep people out, but we forget that it keeps us in as well. You know, it keeps us in. Yeah. And then these fences get wider and longer and taller. And yeah. then we don't have a way in or out because we forget to put gates on these things. Because we're, we're supposed to be able to go yeah. in and out and back and forth with these relationships as we grow. Yeah. Then we put gates on them, but we forget to put, we put a lock on it. So what's the use <laughs> in putting the gate up there? Yeah. And nobody has a key but us. Yeah. So we find yeah. ourselves, I believe, in a place where... It's just really, it's, it, it defeats the purpose of who we say we are in Christ. Because yeah. it's, you know, obedience calls for us to forgive. In a, in a perfect world? Yeah. Mm -hmm. We don't live in a perfect world. <laughs> Amen. In a perfect world, that scripture is just awesome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've found over the years that sometimes you have to allow for a season mm -hmm. for someone to forgive. Ah, and you can't convict them with that scripture just because they're Absolutely not ready not to forgive. Yeah. And it sure would be great if you could forgive just like that. But, mm -hmm. well, I've mm -hmm. seen it take a season to forgive. What yes, needs sir. to go on during that season? I mean, it, 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 in particular, I guess, if it's somebody you're ministering to. Let's say that your dear brother here is offended by someone and you are ministering to Pastor Bird and he's got to go through this season. What are you saying to him? How are you ministering to him to bring him to the point of even considering forgiveness of the other person? Well, he already knows the answer to that. <laughs> so he can tell us. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's a process. Forgiveness is a process in many times. And uh, when you were talking earlier, Bill, about, uh, well, if I, if I let go of this, then that means that I'm okaying the sin that they did to mm -hmm, me. Mm -hmm. But most of the time in my experience in dealing with people that are dealing with unforgiveness is that the person who offended has no idea that they've offended. And they're going about their life yeah. Un, unharmed, yeah. unscathed, yeah. unaffected yeah. by the unforgiveness that someone else is carrying. And so with that, I, I, would, I would ask the magic question is, what is the length of time that you need to hold on to that so that they'll feel the sting of the effect of the unforgiveness you're carrying? <laughs> yeah. And the answer is, right? You can't, you can't carry it one day or a or hundred yeah. days. Yeah. Like you have to let go of it in order for you to be free because the person that offended you in most cases is already free. Yeah. They're not bound by anything with it. So. Yeah. And they're sleeping better than you are. Yes, they yet. are. That's for sure. <laughs> that's, that's true. <laughs> and, and boy, it's tough to get that, but you're, you're absolutely, absolutely right. That's what has to be done. And then when you forgive, doesn't that lead to a healing process for you, the person that has been offended? Yeah. I, I would say 
in some respects, that might be when your healing can actually That's begin. True. When you Amen. when you let not when they necessarily come and ask for forgiveness, because like you said, they may not do it for a while. Right. But when you, the person offended, can release it, the healing process for you can can begin. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. yeah. I think. Go ahead. go ahead, Neil. I think many times uh, people confuse forgiveness with forgetting. Ah. Those, but they're like, I have to forget everything that happened in order to forgive. And that's not necessarily true. But I believe the process that we talk about of forgiveness begins at the point of forgiveness. Yeah. And Be then you begin to walk out that forgiveness, that healing. Yeah, because the, the, the event, uh, the offense may be, have been so traumatic, you, you'll never forget it. I mean, right. You just can't possibly forget it. Yeah. Yes. But again, letting it go emotionally is, is what you've got to do. I'm reminded it, of the scripture of when it says that God... Uh, cast our sin Amen. as far as the east is, is from, from the, the west. west. And then it, it goes on to say that he, re he remembers those things no more. Mm -hmm. Well, we still remember, and the devil sure remembers, yes. and he is, a, he is good Amen. at what he does, friends. Amen. He will go back in and he will remind you, and then he'll add two more to the story, yeah. right? He'll yeah. make it bigger than it really was in the first place. And that's, that's why forgiveness... Um, it's, it's, it can be so uh, tangled up Amen. and we, I think you mentioned it before that it's just a, a one time forgive then it's done. Sometimes, man, we got to forgive and we got to remind ourselves every five seconds. Mm. I forgive you. I choose right. to, to forgive you. That's the key and word there, is it not choose? Yeah, choice. Right. choice. Choice is a big yeah. word and, and listening to what uh, Pastor Neil was saying in a perfect world. You know, and, and in a perfect world, it, all of that happens and it happens in this perfect world. Yeah. But we know that it takes more than just a, a word um, on paper. It takes more than scripture. It takes a lot more than we are oftentimes able to give people if we're looking to give them something outside of ourselves. Yeah. So I think that sometimes what we need to do as, as men and women of God is we need to we need to give them what we have inside of us. That's right. You know, and how we got through a certain thing in forgiveness and how difficult it is to forget something of especially of a traumatic nature. Uh, coming from a personal point of view, the, tra the trauma in my life, you know, was it's just not easy to forget that. You know, it's always laying on the sticky side of my mind what happened. Yeah. But what has happened now is that you no longer allow this thing, this event, this um, thing that has happened in your life to control you or to uh, be a part of what you do and why you do because yeah. every relationship that you have is going to be affected by the unforgiveness that is in you because of one particular instance. You know what I mean? So we have to learn how to let go of all of that stuff. Right. It, it, we're going to take a break. When we come back, I'd like to talk specifically about the fact that there is evidence to show that when we hold uh, unforgiveness in our heart, mm -hmm. it can actually affect our health. Hallelujah. Some people don't, don't, don't really think that's the, the case, but it, it can happen. We'll deal with that and more in a moment. We'll be right back. Don't go away. There's still a lot more discussion to come on this episode of Life Questions. But first, do you have a question for a future show? Email it to lifequestions at WTLW.com or call us 419-339-4444. You can also suggest pastors you feel would be a good fit for our panel. Again, send your question ideas and pastor suggestions to lifequestions at WTLW.com. Now back to the discussion. All right, we're back. Happy that you stayed with us. Let's continue our discussion about forgiveness. And um, there seems to be evidence, and, and, and I've heard doctors say this, that holding grudges can lead to ill health. I mean, you, you're, you're carrying that thing around and physically it can have a negative effect on your body. Mm -hmm. um, some people just aren't buying it though. And they continue to hold on to it. Mm -hmm. What do we do in those cases? Everybody knows that Unforgiveness affects your mind, and to the best of my knowledge, your mind kind of controls your body. Yes. So it seems like those two would go together. Mm -hmm. That's a very good point, right? There. Yeah, and, and, and just to tag along with what Pastor Neil's saying, because you know, even our, our word tells us that out of the fullness of the heart, the mouth shall speak. At some point, that forgiveness gets into your heart, and, and it's going to come out. It's yeah. coming out. 
yeah. in one, some way or another. And um, so, yeah, I agree with you. 100% it exposes on that. itself too. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it does. Yes, it does. It does. I, I, I recall a, a gentleman telling me once that his wife had had several visits to the hospital mm -hmm. and um, meetings with doctors. And on one of those occasions, he was talking to the doctor about his wife's condition. And the doctor said to him, you know, it is people like your wife that keep me in business. Mm. And he amazingly looked at the doctor and said, you mean to tell me she doesn't have to be in this hospital again? He said, yeah, she's just carrying all this stuff around mm. inside yes. of her. Yes. And it keeps bringing her back into the hospital. Amen. Just bitterness after bitterness after bitterness. Mm. Right. It has an impact, doesn't it? Yeah, and my wife is a nurse, and she can tell you for sure. She's had several conversations with patients and said, are you carrying any sort of unforgiveness? Mm. And in most cases, they say, as a matter of fact, I am. Mm. Wow. Wow. Yeah, that's, that's a good one. You know, the word tells us that we are to cast our cares upon Amen. the Lord. Mm -hmm. And if we're not careful, we'll let our English language dictate casting. You know, if we want to go right. fishing, you know, we're just click, <laughs> click, click, right? right? But that word cast actually means it's it's an, uh, an aggressive action. Get it yes. away. It's almost like you have a spider on you. What mm -hmm. are you going to do? Oh, get, no way. You're going to get that thing off me yeah. real quick. Right. And that's how the word describes how we need to get those cares, our burdens off of us. Mm -hmm. It's so important that we let go. Otherwise, if we don't let go, it's going to affect us in more than ways than one. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I've been in several counseling sessions, Bill, where people say when they go through unforgiveness and they release it and they say, I feel like I had a thousand pounds lifted yeah. off of my yeah. shoulders. Mm -hmm. And so that's evidence to me that there is a heavy burden with carrying that unforgiveness. Yes. Around. Hallelujah. Yeah. Wow. That's good. It's, it's better. I, I hope people that are, that are watching can, uh, can grasp that. People that are in that state can, mm -hmm. can let it go. Uh, on a related matter, uh, one of the questions that we got from our viewers was uh, about sin. Some people say that sickness, we're talking about sickness, sickness be, that they say that sickness is a sign of sin in your life. And, you know, I guess it's like those uh, well-wishers who came up to Job. Right. <laughs> right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. His three best friends. Who, you know, know, fess up, Job. What have you done wrong here? Yes. You know, and, and that sickness is what what causes sin in your life, and that a person needs more faith to be healed if they're in that type of situation. How say you, gentlemen? What, what, do, you, what do you think? Well, if that was really true, then everybody in the world would be sick because we all sin. <laughs> Amen. That's so true. Amen. Amen. So true. So true. So true. And, and you know, um, and, and it, as our Lord has taught us, um, sometimes the affliction has nothing to do with the condition of a person in their heart. Um, I remember um, God speaking and saying and, 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 and hearing in my spirit and, and seeing in the scriptures where, well, what did this man do to be blind? Yes. You know, and sometimes it's just the things that we go through in this world to just coincide with what he says that right. in this world we'll have trouble and we think we know what trouble is, mm -hmm. but trouble sometimes is just not being able to, to see. To be blind and yeah. not be blind and always to be blind because all sickness not being deaf, but be blind so that the glory of God can yeah. be revealed so he'll get the in the glory. day you get to sight. Yeah, that's good. Mm -hmm. Very good, very good. That's good. There's another question that we got in that I, I uh, want to deal with. This is a question from our viewing audience. It says that I want to be God's sheep, but I struggle not to sin. And I dare say wow. I've not, ne ne never met a person who doesn't struggle. Hallelujah. Because we, we all want to walk in God's spirit. We don't yeah. want to walk in our flesh. Yeah. And, it's, and it's a daily yeah. uh, maintenance situation. Yeah. You, yes. you, really yeah. you, you go right back to the book of Acts that, that all have sinned, sinned. And, yes. and fallen short of the, of the, the glory, glory of God. Of God. Mm -hmm. And, and th I think that's what we've got to keep in mind, that all of us have sinned, but God leaves us, uh, God loves us too much to leave us in that condition. And so uh, he forgives us, but he gives us opportunities to grow mm -hmm. and get past, get past those times. And there are times that there's, there's, there's sin that, that, that's repetitive mm -hmm. and you can get counsel and you can get help through those, those types of things. And obviously uh, I heard someone say this, that he's the God of a million and one second chances. <laughs> and, uh, 
uh, we've just got to press on to the to, to greater righteousness and sanctification, which yes. that happens, at, you know, on a daily basis as long as we press towards it, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so I, I think that uh, just keep your eyes on him. The, the Word of God says to seek Amen. first Thank you. the kingdom of God and yeah. his righteousness. I think we're talking about growth there yeah. because the oh, more we grow, yeah. the more we can grow away from those things that tend to mm -hmm. um, trip us up so much as... Uh, the author yes. of Hebrews talks about the, the sin that death so easily beset us. Set us. Yes, yeah. sir. Yes, That's sir. Kind of if someone comes to me and says, I'm having problems sinning, I usually say, well, that's good. Because mm -hmm. if you're not having problems, then you really have a problem. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. You're probably Amen. dead. That's right. right. That's yeah. true. That's a very, that's and, and Paul talks about that in Romans in 7, 14 to like 29, where he talks about the struggle with sin. And I, who would choose not to sin, still have this evil right beside me. Yeah. You know, that reality that sin is going to be always present, always there. Uh, I think Pastor Neil uh, taught me a long time ago about how sin always keeps you longer than you want to stay mm -hmm. and always costs you more than you, you want to pay. pay. You yeah. know, and that's part of that's part of who we are. We are these people who need a constant reminder each and every day that great is his faithfulness yes. because he's the one that's faithful. It's not us. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, another question that, uh, that we got that came in. Um, see, let's just see what your take is on this. Why did Jesus only choose male disciples? Wow. We asked the last group about this and. Uh, <laughs> They had some very good answers about that. Any idea why did Jesus choose male disciples? Why did he create man? Why did he not create Eve first and then use a rib mm -hmm. to create Adam? Um, I think that this is another one of those places where if we start asking why, that the, <laughs> eventually what we're going to hear is God say, why not? Why not? Why, why not? You know, I'm, you know what I mean? Instead of me trying to figure out why he used only male disciples, I think that um, that discipleship itself is, is, is another place where we just where we just kind of confuse as to what a disciple is. A disciple is not a man of God. A disciple is not a woman of God. A disciple is a child of God who is following another child of God. And if the Lord decided that he would start with men, it wouldn't be the first time he decided to start with men. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it was a male-dominated culture as well. Thank you. A male-dominated culture, and that's the answer that we got in the mm -hmm. well, a couple of weeks or so ago. A male-dominated culture, mm -hmm. plus the fact that he was a rabbi. Jesus was a rabbi, right? Mm -hmm. And he was surrounded by men because he was a rabbi. Yeah. yeah. Just thought I'd throw that out there to see how you felt about that. Um, he had a lot of women following him. Yes, he. That's did. the other part Obvious. that came up. Yeah. Yes, he yes. did. Yeah. Greatest like supporters of his ministry. Yeah, yeah. Amen. greatest supporters of Amen. his ministry. Yeah. So if you can't figure that out, then you'd be narrow-minded about other things too. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Um, this is a question that we had talked about a while back, and then we, now that we've got some time, I want to make sure we get to that. We appear to be in a time of life where people make decisions based on what feels right. Yeah. Well, God gives us feelings, is what this viewer writes. God gives us feelings. Why is it not okay to make decisions based on our feelings? Because they change. Because <laughs> they change. <laughs> feelings do. They change. Boy, they do, don't they? And we'll be all over the board. If a double-minded man is what? Unstable yeah. in all, of all his ways. Does, right? And if we go by our feelings, but we have to be careful, and I've learned this as well, that we have to be very careful uh, when we start talking about feelings because they are valid and we need to validate people mm -hmm. and let them know that it's okay for them to feel a certain way. It's just not okay for them to react as a result of how they feel. We're going to react or we're going to respond. And if we're responding, we're going to respond in a way that first off pleases God and respond and it's a responsible way of, of responding or reacting. And we're just going to act like we've act before. It's a pre action. We're going to react. We're going to act like we always have, and we're going to get what we always got. So our feelings are dangerous, but they're so valuable because they show us, I believe where we are mm -hmm. in Christ and, and how we need to move forward. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Any other takers on that? I'm reminded of second Corinthians five, seven, 
where Paul instructs us to walk by faith and not by sight. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's the goal. So it's not by what we see or feel or mm -hmm. sense with our five senses, but really our walk is supposed to be by faith. It is by faith. And, mm -hmm. and it's to be led by the Spirit of God. Yes, sir. We, yes. we, we don't make our decisions or our judgments based on feelings, but by the leading of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Yes. But how like do we what, get to that? Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I'm just asking, how do we get yeah. to that though? Yeah. I mean, you know, once again, we're talking about a wonderful, wonderful opportunity to to share these questions with one another and yeah. to, to to get each other's in, input and to help each other and help the audience. I pray, you know, but how do we get to that for for a person who, who doesn't know the Lord? Yeah. How do we get to this perfect world that we espouse to that uh, Pastor Neil uh, talks about? You know, how do we get there? Mm -hmm. I think one thing, particularly if you're talking about a person who's unsaved, they, they need to know that there is a better lifestyle, I guess. Yeah, there's a better in way. Christ, there's a better way. Mm -hmm. And once they come to Christ, that the Holy Spirit wants to be responsible for you now. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. He becomes our compass, our GPS system, whatever you want. He leads Hallelujah. us into all truth. He yes. does. Yes. Praise God. He does. Praise God. First Peter 5 8 tells us to be alert and of sober mind. Mm -hmm. Yes. And the, the part after that tells us that the, your enemy you know, roams around like a lion seeking whom he may devour. And I yes. think many times we're not walking around alert. We're not walking around with sober judgment, as the word also mm -hmm. tells us to be, right. have sober, sober judgment for yourself. And if, if we're not careful... Right, it goes right back to those emotions and our feelings, and then yes, we're sir. we're going losing our minds and putting people on blast right on social media yeah. and doing all these different crazy things that, mm -hmm. you know, and then you feel guilty about what you did, but it's already out there, right? right? Uh, follow God's word, uh, especially for why well, if you're a believer, you, hopefully you are following God's word, mm -hmm. but to have sober judgment, think before you act. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Anybody else on that? Uh, yeah. I'm just reminded uh, that we are to be quick to listen and slow to speak, right? That's good. Yeah. And uh, just just let the Spirit lead you before yes. you respond. Mm -hmm. and some yeah. people say we have two ears and only one mouth. Right on. <laughs> we right need on. To well, that's good. Do, yeah. The, yeah. do twice Double as much up. listening yeah. Amen. as we do Amen. in the talking stage. Amen. Yeah. We always use Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 as a Thank foundational yes, scripture sir. to trust in the Lord yeah. with all your heart. Yeah. Right I, I throw verse 7 in there as well, Pastor. Uh, but you, you're absolutely right. And, and you know, when, when the Lord offers that in Proverbs 3, verses uh, 4, 5, 6, 7, he, it's not a suggestion. No, it's not. It's, right. not, a, it's, not, you know, it's <laughs> not like it's a good idea that you consider this. Yeah. It's a command <laughs> that you do this. And, and he's telling you, even though he has given you a mind, and I hear people say, well, God has given me a mind. He's given me a brain. I intend to use it. Yeah, well, he also gave you the Holy Spirit. Right. Yes. And you, by God, you better let him lead you and guide yeah. you right. rather than trying to make decisions on your own. Yeah. So. Yeah. Otherwise, our lives will just be governed by for, by by hindsight, yeah. and, and we need to get some foresight today. Yeah. Yeah. Well, listen. Let's let's take a minute. We have about a minute left. Let's take that time, and I'd like you to go around and just tell us a little bit your church, the name of your church, where it's located. I'm sure that people in the audience have been inspired by the things that you've said today. Uh, let Let's start over here with Pastor Booker. The name of your church and the address and, and the time of your service. Uh, yes, it's Lima First Assembly of God. Uh, we are right on 81, just right off the intersection of uh, 75 and 81. Okay, very quickly. Okay, Church of Downtown, two and a quarter miles west of Tom Hall's dealerships. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead. I'm with Revive Ohio. We're called to equip the saints and teach them how to share the gospel and make disciples. Uh, Pastor Bradley. Pastor Wayne, I can Celebration Ministry, 615 West High Street in beautiful downtown Lima, right next door to Subway, 11 o'clock. All Sunday right. mornings. Thank you very much. We're all out of time. Thank you for being with us today. We'll see you again next week. You've been watching TV44's newest locally produced program, Life Questions. Now we'd like your feedback. What did you enjoy about this show and what would you like to see more? 
Perhaps you have your own questions you'd like us to pose to our panel of pastors in a future show. Submit your questions now by email to lifequestions at wtlw.com or call us with your thoughts. We're able to discuss relevant topics with local pastors right here in the TV44 studio thanks to your financial support. Now is an excellent time to make a one-time gift to TV44 or consider becoming a monthly donor. 100% of your donation stays right here at TV44 and is used to spread the family-friendly, life-changing message of Jesus Christ. Secure donations can be made online at WTLW.com, by phone, by mail, or in person. Again, share your questions for consideration for future shows or just contact us with your comments at lifequestions at WTLW.com.